In this video, we're gonna be embarking on printing the largest model I've ever printed. Oh. Roll the montage. Now, every month, One Page Rules releases models, and every month, I have the best of intentions of printing most of them and entering a painting contest. And one day, while I was sitting at home, missing out on work because of my ankle, I had an idea. It was a dumb idea, but I thought- I've decided to print the legendary Avatar of Plague. First part out of the four parts for just the base of the model is beginning, and it is an eight and a half hour print. And that's even with my lift speed at three millimeters per second. So so it's looking like I might be able to print two pieces a day, which means there's four pieces for the base, two for the body, seven pieces. So looking maybe at three and a half, four days just to print, two weeks to Christmas, let's do this. <laughs> Fortunately, these pieces just fit my printer's size. I really wanted to maximize printer efficiency. So every time I had a print going, I would check the app to see how much time it had remaining. And I would do my best to start a new print just as the previous print had finished. Okay, so we've started print number five and it's finished in seven hours. Plan is to hopefully at like 3 p.m. print the next part. That's like seven and a half, eight hours. And then at like 10, 11 p.m. start the last print overnight. And hopefully we can be done by tomorrow morning. Okay, I've just come back from the garage, still got the crutches, but when I wake up, it will be done. When I woke up, you know, like a kid on Christmas day and check on the printer, that's when I had my first bail. I use the clean vat feature, which is basically just turns your whole LCD screen on uh, to cure a small layer to catch any loose bits that might be floating around. And then I tried to set the printer again, but this time I used one millimeter per second lift speed as opposed to kind of my vroom vroom three millimeters per second to see if the piece wouldn't peel from the supports this time. Now I washed them thoroughly, making sure particularly the hollow pieces filled up with IPA and then just tipped that IPA out and just kind of swirled it around and stuff like that just repeatedly multiple times to make sure there was no uncure resin left inside. All the supports, once I removed them from the prints, I left them on a tray in the sun to cure, then to chuck them out so I didn't have to like keep putting them through the wash and cure. Before gluing the pieces together, so this is kind of why I'm waiting for the second attempt, I removed all the micro supports. These are kind of little tiny, almost like thin supports that just really help make sure there's less fails. Now this took a bit of time just trying to find them all and reach them all. As I was doing that, I was looking at the prints a bit closer and could see a few minor fails here and there on different parts. The most noticeable is on the right side of the face or the left if you're looking at the mod like from the model's point of view but like once you paint it I don't think you're going to notice there were some other fails here and there on some mushrooms and even like the back of the model on its like cape thing but like no one's going to see that and I didn't even paint the back that well I also dry fitted the pieces together just to make sure that they actually fit together and there wasn't too much warping or deviation from the printing process just to do that just to make sure I didn't have to do any like readjustments or like cutting or anything like that the next day I woke up and the print had failed again I thought I might as well change the FEP because it looked a bit cloudy and re-level the build plate. This is a tedious process changing the FEP and I have a YouTube short outlining how to do that, which is a bit of a meme. Once I emptied the vat, I started unscrewing a billion screws and luckily I had my electric drill, which just made it like so much quicker than trying to use an Allen key. Like this is a game changer. I also re-leveled the build plate. Now, most people I see online, like they use like card or A4 paper and they sometimes give you like a leveling card. For me, what I do is I usually have the empty vat in place and then lower the build plate and let it zero. The, the brand I get my FEPs from, I saw they did a video on it with my exact same printer when I was first setting it up and that's what I've been doing and I find it works for me um, and I think part of it is like that's the actual distance it will be from the screen or roughly there'll be a layer of resin there and so it kind of works out and you're not trying to guess because your FEP could change in thickness depending on what brand you buy and stuff like that so this kind of gives it more accurate but like feel free to give that a go is a bit of like kind of my recommendation to you but like to each their own it's just something that I've done and it works for me okay you're looking at pretty much a defeated man but this is the final print, hopefully. I've just like replaced the FEP, I've re-leveled the build plate, 
I have offered sacrifices to the printer gods and just any, no, I'm kidding. I'm, so yeah, let's check in back and sorry, I look like I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> now, while I was trying to print again, I glued the bases together. There were like three pieces for the base and then this like weird bony thing. And I had to use some green stuff just to fill in some gaps and then some texture paint to help kind of blend my pore sculpting in. Now, there was also this weird bit that was in the super glue that I had to like pull out. I constantly checked on the printer for this last print. And so like every two, four hours just checking to make sure that it was okay because if something had failed, I need to restart this print because it was like a 10 hour print and I didn't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But December 15, 7.54 PM. Finally! Oh my goodness, we did it. Oh. Finally. It had taken me, I think it was almost, yeah, four and a half days to print this bad boy. Now I began priming the parts and noticed that there was this fail on the weapon. This oh piece no. that I had already made three attempts failed right at the end. And now I didn't want to spend another eight hours trying to reprint this with the chance that it would print. So I instead thought I'd kind of cut the spear off and just print the spear head and reattach it. And so I cut the file using Prusa Slicer and used Lychee Slicer for auto supports and printed multiple copies just for redundancy. Well, as I was trying to tinker around, I decided to cut the whole right side of the axe off because I thought that would be easier to attach the missing piece. Now for the fun part, the painting. It was December 18, seven days out from starting. I primed the model black and then did a heavy dry brush of gray and progressively lighter, lighter dry brushes with light gray and white. My main plan was the slap chop method just to get the base colors down and then go back into the important areas with layered highlights. Now I spent quite a bit of time painting this back bony part only to realize that you wouldn't see it in the photo that I would submit. From there, I focused on one color at a time and just built up from there. I was using blue and green as my scheme with kind of purple and pink accents, following along one page's rules kind of preview of the plague daemons that they released. And as I was painting, I started to realize that this was a way bigger task than I anticipated. It was December 21st and this is where I was up to. And you might think to yourself, wow, you've got four more days, like you're gonna smash this. But you know, it's the festive season, Christmas time, and there's lots of like family and social stuff happening, which makes your available time for projects like this just very limited and while I was also doing this I was like filming and printing the like goblins and squigs for a squiggle ranch box video that's already been released Christmas Eve, I went hard on highlighting the skin and this kind of like scale crusty stuff. For some reason for me, the skin was just lots of random lines that got progressively lighter. I added some random detail to the basing, you know, the mushrooms, some dots here and there. But by late Christmas Eve, I called it and began taking photos. It can be very tricky to get the perfect photo, particularly when you've spent so many hours painting it. You really need to make your photo show that off with. But part of me felt like I really needed to spend a bit more time on the photo aspect of this contest, as that's kind of all the judges and people voting see. What do you think of the result? Unfortunately, I didn't win or make it into the top three, even though there was only eight submissions. Um, I think I could have bumped up the contrast and really just kind of made it a bit more brighter. Maybe gone harder on the highlights on the particularly the green maybe added some like really yellow ones for like those peak highlights i'm happy with the result and i feel like my painting has improved quite a lot in the past year what do you think let me know if you'd like to watch me paint something else you can watch me paint this cray talk model by clicking over here or there's another hobby related video over here thank you for watching and happy hobbying